Hi, Mike Kennedy with you today, and I want to show you something I get in the mail today. I'm kind of excited about this. This is a winter project material. We're going to be building a crystal radio. Uh, this is from the... X stands for crystal, so the Crystal Society. Extel Society, whatever you want to say. Set Society. Okay, I'll, I'll give a link in the bottom. I want to say first off, they were kind of... I saw him promoting this book in a on a link and so I got it and then I got some, the other part that I'm missing to make crystal radios and uh, this book uh, I think it was about eight bucks and it's uh, 221 pages at least now this really covers uh, it's volumes 9 10 and 11 of this newsletter that they had so this covers some really uh, advanced topics and some really simple radios as well. I guess I would suggest if you really want to get into crystal radios that you would buy this because this goes from it almost doesn't cover as much the basic but it covers some of the advanced things. In other words you can build a shortwave crystal radio that picks up uh, shortwave signals. They even have plans on building a uh, crystal radio that you can hear uh, ham radio people talking on Morse code with. So it's kind of interesting. But the basic idea behind crystal radios... Oh, well, let me show you this other part I got from them. This was very reasonably priced. Uh, these are earphones. And why do we need earphones? Well, number one with a crystal radio is they're very low power. So they don't generate... If we're using them uh, without power, okay, in our initial phase of making a crystal radio, it's going to be a radio that works with no power, except what it gets as radio waves. It's going to use those radio waves as a total source of its power. And one of the important things is uh, both microphones and earphones, headphones, whatever, have a measurement called impedance, okay? And let's just suffice it to say that if you have the wrong impedance attached to a device, it's just not going to work right. So these uh, these uh, have the correct impedance to work with a crystal radio. And I got three of them. They were quite inexpensive. And he also included the uh, 47 uh, uh, ohm resistors or kilo ohm resistors that go with it for proper use. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that. This was kind of the other part, that I, the only part that I was really missing. Uh, now here's the here's the guts of the radio here. These are diodes. Now diodes normally are just used to uh, have current travel in one direction. You could think of them as like a check valve in plumbing. You know, if you're familiar with a check valve, it has a ball a ball in it, and when a current goes one way, uh, it moves the ball up kind of and allows the water to go. If water goes the other way, the ball goes down and it stops the flow. Well, you could think of diodes like that too. And to give you a, a really simple explanation of it is that radio waves perform kind of like an alternating current with going up and down, up and down. So a detector can, can break that apart and you can use it to decode radio waves. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And you'll notice that these are even labeled that they're 70s, 80s vintage. They're the 1N34PA. And believe it or not, I actually traded with someone for these because he had selected them out as particularly good for crystal radius. Uh, as you can, you'll see in this book, there's kind of no end to where you can go with crystal radios. You can see this one on here is fairly complex. You can... Uh, really get into them and you can actually measure the effectiveness of each individual diode you know rather than just swapping it into circuits you could do that but you can also just take them if you have the proper uh, setup and you can measure their Q or their effectiveness to be used as uh, detectors or decoders of radio signals uh, so I'm kind of excited about having that so the other parts basically are, are uh, you know, you saw me make a capacitor. Uh, they have some plans in here for making 
a capacitor. They call it a Gil Gilligan's Island radio. But making your own capacitor out of sheets of aluminum that can work. Normally, uh, you might use a uh, uh, a capacitor you buy, but uh, typically, here's an old time radio. It's a very simple circuit here. And basically what you end up having is you have a coil, which is a, uh, a lot of wrappings of wire around a certain form. And here it becomes important. We're gonna talk about coils. We talked about capacitors. We'll do a short video on making a coil and what coils do. But as we kind of hinted in our video about capacitors, uh, just as capacitors oppose direct current, coils can be used to oppose alternate current. And with that, they can be used to, they can be tuned to certain frequencies so they can oppose or enhance certain frequencies. And that's the advantage of this coil. Now in the old days, they had detectors that were actually a lump of lead or galena. And this has got an article in there about that. So, but we're, we're a little more advanced now. We're gonna use these, although eventually I would like to use, get a detector out and make one with, with galena as well. But basically we have a very simple circuit which involves a, a tuning coil, a variable capacitor, a diode, resistor, and some headphones, and usually a fairly long antenna and a ground, okay? And the antenna, of course has to do with uh, how far you are from a radio station. You know, now here in Gorham, I'm just a couple miles away from uh, radio stations right in the greater Portland area. I think there's a tower right here in Westbrook. So I'd be very close to some ones. These are primarily AM radios, but they have found that you can use crystal radios to detect and decode uh, FM, okay? AM is amplitude modulation, FM is frequency modulation, and if you're near, uh, you're close to an FM station, there is a way to construct a crystal radio to actually decode an FM signal as well. So I'm kind of excited. This is gonna be a nice winter project. I have a number of the, the uh, well, actually I have many of these diodes, but these are ones that, like I say, were specially selected out for me in a trade that I did. Man needed some other diodes, so I traded them now, those for them. And then uh, I've accumulated the magnet wire, and uh, and uh, I have the variable capacitor. So basically, we have everything to, we need now to put them together. Uh, <coughs> this book uh, looks extremely interesting, and can just go. In, it can show you that there's like, oh, here's the one, the Gilgun's Island radio. It's called because what you actually do is remember my capacitor that I made with aluminum foil and mica? Well, they're making, this is called the Gilligan's radio, they're making a capacitor with uh, with some sheets of aluminum hardboard, and you tune it by moving it. So in other words, that varies the amount of material that's directly opposite, uh, you know, conductors that are di directly opposite of each other. And uh, I, a lot of times with these capacitors, we're using air as the, the dielectric. In other words, there's just plates and in between them is air. And that makes it very easy to vary their things because all we have to do is move the plates. Uh, typically, uh, oh, here's a very, here's a extremely simple uh, circuit that shows you it's just a few parts to, or it's an even simpler one. And, uh, you know, if you're close enough to a station, uh, I've seen someone just put a diode on headphones and it works. It, it all depends on the strength of the signal that you're uh, dealing with. But with this, uh, they go off into some more extreme uh, measures to uh, be able to tune and uh, make the circuit much more uh, sensitive so that we can start doing things like picking up shortwave radio. We can do things like uh, uh, p 
picking up uh, ham radio transmissions. But it's just amazing. And kind of with anything like this, it's almost, because it's electronics, there's no end to it. In other words, you could keep refining it and refining it. Eventually, you get to a point of, of diminishing returns. But uh, there is quite a bit you can do to a crystal radio to enhance uh, its performance. One of the simple things is that you have a tuning circuit for the for the antenna. And that does that does a great deal too. So this is just a very interesting book. Uh, depending on how geeky you are and how much you want to get into electronics. Like I say, I think if you go to their link, there's a they sell a I think it was a 45 page booklet that's a beginner just kind of saying let's let's make a simple crystal radio and get it to work. Here's an article I'm really looking forward to reading because, you know, I'm into minerals and science, but mineralogy and the composition of galena. Galena is a lead crystal, and what they found is this is one of the original detectors that were used, and they would use a, something called a cat's whisker, which was actually uh, uh, a phosphorus-coated thing that would come down and touch the crystal and you can move that around and find kind of a hot spot on that crystal and you would find a place where this detector would work especially well. Now there have been other things used for detectors besides something like this besides Galena and one of the famous things you could look up is a foxhole radio. During World War II uh, they would make foxhole radios and these were radios that actually used a razor blade as a detector and a pencil. And you can still construct these radios today if you have a period razor blade and they still sell them for the use. And the, the advantage was uh, that these radios could be undetected by the enemy. Now, usually you would think, what do you mean? No one can detect a receiver. Well, in the old days they had what they called regenerated receivers and they would actually transmit a small amount of signal in the process of receiving a signal. So it could be possible with directional antennas to tell exactly where those receiver radios were. Well, the Fox hole crystal radio solved that because there was no power being admitted and just po the, the uh, power came in from the antenna and was all used to generate uh, uh, the audio. So there we go, that's just a uh, basic introduction to it. Here's a book with a lot of uh, intermediate to advanced techniques, uh, but I'm sure I'm going to be get out of this. The simple, this articles in here that are simple too as well. But again, it's just something with electronics. You can go on uh, and become incredibly collect, complex with the uh, with the theory, with uh, refinements and things like that. Some people even claim that. Uh, Making a crystal detector produces a higher quality of sound than you can do with other techniques. So some people will make a radio with this as a detector, then add power to it. You know, in other words, they still want to drive a speaker. Uh, maybe they have power amplification of a radio signal coming in so they don't have to have a long antenna or whatever. But uh, some people claim that the audio quality from uh, a diode is superior to what we have in most transistor type radios today. So there you go. This is part one and yeah, it's gonna take me a while to get to part two on this because I'm gonna, hopefully I'm gonna be doing a radio with my grandchildren and I'm also gonna try to construct an advanced radio as well.